the sight of glistening waves and the sound of their crashes on the southern shore of Lake Michigan can transport the mind away from the Midwest. The Indiana Dunes inspired artist Frank V. Dudley during the early 20th century, who often depicted the landscape in his works. He hoped to promote preservation by sharing the beauty of the scenery in his paintings. If you visit the beach, you will see how his use of color and contrast accurately captured the dunes. The only thing his paintings are missing now is a few empty water bottles, abandoned toys, and potato chip bags. Visitors come to the Indiana Dunes National and State Park to hike, camp, or simply relax in the beauty of nature, but many are harming the beloved beach with litter. Though beach cleanups try to remove as much garbage as possible, it is impossible to pick up all of the microplastics. Rather than accumulating into garbage patches as they do in the ocean, plastics in the Great Lakes wear down into minuscule pieces, 5 millimeters or smaller, due to the currents and the sunlight and UV radiation. According to the Rochester Institute of Technology, about 11 million pounds, which is half of the estimated plastic entering the Great Lakes, goes into Lake Michigan. Litter is not the only contributor. Synthetic fabrics in washing machines and landfill leachate increase tiny microplastic fibers in the water as wastewater treatment plans currently are not designed to filter out all microplastics. These microplastics can absorb and concentrate toxic chemicals such as PCBs, PFAS, DDT, and flame retardants. Researchers wonder if this magnifies the contaminants. Both animals and people are consuming these microplastics. Microfibers have been found in the stomachs and even within the very tissue of fish. The University of Toronto found that microplastic exposure increased deformities among larval fathead minnows. In turn, people can ingest this plastic when eating fish. Fibers have been found in tap water and beer with source water from the Great Lakes. Over 10 million people's drinking water comes from Lake Michigan. The effects of microplastic consumption on humans still need further research, but journal Nanomaterials reports scientists found evidence of nanoplastics, which are broken down even further, affecting physical stress and damage, apoptosis, necrosis, inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune response to the human body. Though beachgoers can help mitigate the issue by properly disposing of their garbage and avoiding single-use plastics, consumers cannot hold all responsibility for this issue. Plastics can usually only be reused as recycled products a couple of times at most. Policymakers have been more concerned and focused on PFAS, or forever chemicals, in waterways as information on the effects of microplastics is lacking. Future legislation needs to regulate businesses' use of plastic so the issue does not continue to build upon itself. This can prove difficult as industries resist, but reducing single-use plastics and waste will help protect these bodies of water and the life they provide. With greater effort to mitigate plastic pollution, we will hopefully no longer have to worry about contaminants in the wildlife or our own bodies, and the Dunes Beach will look as pristine as it does in Dudley's paintings.